JT Show. What's going on, you sexy beasts, and welcome to another episode of the Smash JT Show, my weekly episodic adventure discussing divisive issues in the video game industry and beyond sometimes. It airs every Friday, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. And before we get started, do me a favor, hit that like button, and let's just jump right into it. And guess what? We're going to be talking about microtransactions yet again on this show, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of a different stance on what I used to look at this as a terrible thing and kind of reel it in a little bit to look at it from a, a realistic standpoint. Now, the question I want to pose to you guys kicking this whole thing off is, is it okay for a full-priced $60 US dollar full-priced AAA game to come shipped with microtransactions and, if you want to go that far, DLC on day one? Is that acceptable or not? That in itself is a very loaded question, and I'm going to do my best to try to break down both sides of it within this video. First off, full disclosure and revealing any bias that I may have, I hate microtransactions. I hate companies that use them. I feel like they're predatory in nature. They take advantage of a lot of consumers that either don't know any better or use their parents' credit card when their parents don't know any better. But regardless of how it's gone about, it's not necessarily something that should be a part of a video game. Now, people might hear that and say, well, look at arcades. They used to charge a quarter every time you used to play. It's like, well, yeah, that was more like you're renting the game because you don't own the arcade. You're going to the arcade and paying them for the privilege to use it. In this case, you are buying the actual cartridge or game disc, and you should theoretically own it at that point. And now game publishers are trying to get more of the pie by charging additional fees during the actual gameplay experience. This came up recently with the latest Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and Jason Schreier, who writes for Kotaku, it's a very well-respected news source in the game industry, is defending microtransactions, is saying that they're actually not that bad that youtubers give them a bad look and when i think youtubers giving microtransactions a, a bad name i mean the one person that comes to mind is jim sterling who i adore i'm looking at jason schreier and i'm saying maybe he's not wrong maybe microtransactions aren't terrible and hear me out before you just start criticizing me in the comment section because I'm not defending microtransactions here. In fact, like I said, I can't stand them. They're predatory in nature and they take advantage of a lot of people that don't know any better. But from the standpoint of a game publisher, someone creating the game, putting all this time and effort and work into them, shareholders trying to make as much money as possible, which is a whole nother issue in itself, but throwing that into the pile here of problems with the game industry and trying to get as much money as possible out of the consumer after selling the product to somebody, I can't necessarily argue with them from that standpoint. If people are willing to drop loads of money or at least take advantage of their parents' credit card to drop loads of money on extra content in games, I'd be doing it if I was them too. The problem isn't necessarily with the publishers. I would point the finger at us, the consumer, and say, guys, stop buying microtransactions, and the publishers would stop putting them in the games. If nobody bought them, guess what? There'd be no need to put them in there. But people do buy them, and that point right there is the spark that lights the fire of the problem with microtransactions, and it's growing as time goes on. And you get games like Fortnite that are free, they're not the full $60 releases, and they're trying to say, hey, this is a free game, you can get all the DLC and microtransactions, you get the different dances and different weapons and stuff, spend money on V-Bucks, and you can have it, it's yours. But the game's free. So it's really hard to argue with that whole setup from a gamer's perspective. When you look at a game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, or if you want to take another example, Shadows of Mordor, or if you want to take another example, Call of Duty, there's a ton of games out there that exploit people trying to get as much money as possible during the gameplay. It's only natural for prices to go up on things over time. Things get more expensive. Inflation happens. But video games have stayed stagnant with their prices. And some have said that that's because the actual industry and 
pool of gamers has grown exponentially, so the cost of making the games has gone down because so many more people are buying them. But at some point, the price of the game is going to need to go up. It's $60 right now, and to sell a full-fledged release for $60, paying people a lot more money now than you used to pay them back in the 80s and 90s and even early 2000s, Something's got to give because you're not able to sell the game at the same price and pay these people who are making the game more money. It just, it doesn't work. Basic financials don't make sense on that. But the problem comes in is if one game company is able to do it and do it right and actually sell it and make money like Super Mario Odyssey or Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which yes, I know there are expansion packs and extra costs on that, but just basic from a microtransaction perspective, those games, AAA titles, Nintendo released them. Or if you want to look at somebody else, look at Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. There are a ton of AAA titles out there that don't use microtransactions. And they might have some DLC, but at the end of the day, they're selling you a full game. It feels like a full experience. You feel like you got your money's worth. And you don't feel like you're being exploited throughout the experience. Then you look at these games from the other companies and say... Why aren't they able to do that as well? But then you take a step back and say, because people are still buying them. And from the perspective of a video game company, if you're able to create a game, market it to the consumer, and sell it to them while also having microtransactions in it, bravo. I mean, honestly, congratulations, because you have managed to pull the wool over millions of gamers' eyes being able to sell a product that should possibly be free and you're selling it for a full $60 price tag and getting money from microtransactions on top of that. Me personally, I do not participate in this area of the video game realm. I'm all about retro gaming because guess what? There are no microtransactions in retro gaming. I love modern gaming, but guess what? I'm not going to be buying the latest Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm not going to be buying any of these games from Ubisoft, EA, Warner Brothers, so many different AAA companies out there that I'm not going to be buying day one. Well, I mean, probably going to be getting Red Dead Redemption 2, but... That's a different story in itself. Yes, that's probably going to have microtransactions. Yes, it's probably going to have DLC. But Rockstar has proven time and time again that they're able to give you a complete game experience without intrusive microtransactions. You look at companies like 2K Games making NBA uh, looking like a phone game almost with all the microtransactions and money that you have to spend just to get a different haircut in that game. And you see the complete dichotomy in the game industry of how one game can be sold looking ridiculous while a another one can be sold managing the expectations of the gamer and making some sort of sense with how they're going about marketing. The problem comes in with microtransactions having the game designed around that and I'm looking at you Star Wars Battlefront 2 from EA completely destroying the entire game experience because you are looking to make as much money as possible. But I feel like the gamers reacted to that in a positive way, fighting back, saying, we're not going to take this. This is going too far. We are drawing a line in the sand right now and cross this line. We're not going to go because it's not what we value in our gameplay experiences. And I think EA, I'd like to think they learned something from that, although it is EA, so probably not. But most companies would say, OK, we can push the consumers only so far we're going to try to push the envelope in little places here and there and seeing what we can exploit from them and go from there which is terrible i don't agree with that whatsoever but at the same time if they're able to do it it's gonna happen it's only natural in a capitalistic society you want to make as much money as possible off people hell go do it you have the freedom to do that and as a consumer you have the freedom to say get the hell out of here with that i'm not gonna buy that crap and if enough people do it guess what that's the direction the market is going to go so do i think that microtransactions are a terrible cancer to the video game industry yes do i think that they're okay though it's a necessary evil the way the direction of the industry has been going. And until people start speaking up with their wallets, stop bitching about microtransactions. Don't buy those games. Take a stand with your wallet. Don't buy games that exploit people. Don't buy Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Even though people say you can experience the game without needing those microtransactions, if you want to state to the company that you don't stand for this, do not buy that game. It's literally that simple 
Now, people might look at Red Dead Redemption 2 and say, well, you're going to buy that, so how could you say that? Look, there are exceptions to every rule, and Red Dead Redemption 2 looks like it's going to be amazing, and I wouldn't be able to hold myself away from that one. But in all honesty, I don't like the practices that Rockstar is doing with it. I don't like microtransactions. DLC is okay. If it adds enough to the game and makes sense cost-wise, I'm fine with DLC. But when it comes to microtransactions, I've never purchased one in my entire life. So if I buy a game and I feel like there's a microtransaction that makes me want to play more and pay for that microtransaction to skip ahead, I will never, ever buy another game in that series ever again. So a lot of these companies are kind of shooting themselves in the foot right now because they're losing a lot of their future audience by treating the current audience the way they are. And that's where I'll leave this video right now, but I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about the situation. Do you feel like $60 full price AAA titles should have microtransactions or should not have microtransactions and why or why not? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about that. Before I end the video, I want to say a special thank you so much to all the Patreons that support on a monthly basis. I honestly could not do this without you guys. You're amazing and I can't thank you enough. If you missed last week's video, I'll put a link to it right there. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications because we all know YouTube and their notification systems. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. And as always, you stay sexy.